Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. Welcome back to my machine shop. And today I have a very good video for you, I hope. And it's all about the contents of this wonderful Steric treasure chest. And what is it? Well, there's six micrometers in there. What's so special about that besides being Steric? Well, you're in for a big surprise. Let's take a look. Do not be deceived about this beautiful Sterrett box. It is brand new, purchased by the man that loaned these to me. The micrometers themselves are quite old, probably anywhere between 1946 and 1956 because of the style. But again, what's so special about this? I'll tell you what's so special. These are micrometers made for the blind. They are in Braille, or at the very least, can be read by tactile touch or feel. I, I may not be stating that correctly. These micrometers were loaned to me by a former student who I admire greatly, one of my best students over the years, one Mr. Troy Legner, who now lives in South Carolina, and his wife Susan works for the South Carolina School for the deaf and blind, so possibly some of her students will be listening to this video, which I, I hope they do, and I'll try to explain this the best that I can. So anyway, Troy purchased this box so that he could ship these to me, because he doesn't own these micrometers either. He also bought the standards here, so these are brand new insulated steric standards to, to check the micrometers for accuracy. I won't really talk about these, but it is a kind of a mismatched set. That is to say that the most common size here, the one inch size, does show some wear and it is not the same vintage. This one is a model, if I can read it here on the back side, well I don't see the model probably because they are special made custom micrometers. They were never in the catalog, but this is what the rest of them look like. And these are model 226, and they're just beautiful, aren't they? And these are in perfect condition, and they have a stop right here, and they have a ratchet. These were produced by Sterrett. I think Brown and & Sharp and other companies made these too after the war. President uh, Truman, I believe, or maybe it was Roosevelt. Roosevelt was dead by the time the war was over, so it was probably Truman that passed a law that all sight-impaired veterans would be trained for some type of occupation before they were sent back home after the war. I suppose you're thinking, well, a, a blind person can't be a machinist. I suspect that these were used for inspection. That is, they were set up and uh, the handicapped person was strictly inspecting rather than machining. Now I'm deducing that. Correct me if I am wrong. Although the little dots here appear to be for Braille, and I, I guess they are Braille, but they are not exactly the same as Braille that's used in an elevator or any other place on a flat surface. Here we have the markings on a cylinder, so I believe that they're just feeling here how many dots there are rather than reading as you would read text. I do not know that for sure, but that's kind of what she indicated, and I don't believe she's ever used these in her teaching. Thank you, Susan and Troy, very, very much. This is, of course, a regular micrometer. Notice that it has numbers that the sighted person can read, but there are no actual numbers on the thimble or the barrel of the Braille micrometers. I think you will enjoy this close-up, but you can see that the grooves here on the thimble are quite deep. And the braille dots here, or whatever they're called, are raised. I'm not sure how they manufactured this, but pretty interesting to see here. One, two, three, four, and five. Also notice the perfect knurl 
diamond neural. So they're very well built and would have been extremely expensive to manufacture, especially in a small lot or a small run, which I would assume was done by Starrett. Now, a close-up here of the barrel. Take a look at how the graduations are cut. Again, they're grooves. And down here, I'm not sure the significance of that, but it's the halfway point, I guess. All done with feel. And I don't know if they used thumbs or fingers or how that was done, but when we roll it over just a little bit, you'll see more graduations right here. I thought you would enjoy seeing the entire set laid out. Here's a little sidebar for you. I really like this box and the fact that they're all packed into foam. I only hope that the foam the Sterrett use is much better than the foam that Mitotoyo had used in the past that deteriorates and then sticks to the surface of the tool and you can't get it off. If you have experienced that, please put it in the comment because they were pretty negligent. Of course, how could they look into the future to see that the, their foam was going to degrade in the atmosphere? But anyway, this micrometer case holds one, two, three, four, five, six plus the standards. Let's look at some of the, or another case that I have here, which is quite different and I don't think nearly as good as this. My friend Russ, who I often mention and I often travel with him, he was the automotive teacher, but anyway, years ago his uncles lived in Chicago and they were landlords. I've told this story before. And some people couldn't pay the rent and they would barter and he would accept tools and guns and coins and all kinds of things like that. But this is something that was given to his uncle and then uh, Russ gave it to me. So here we have four micrometers in a mahogany box. But the problem with this, if you can hear it, can you hear the tools rattling around in there? And because of this, when we look at any given one, and these are used, but in pretty good condition really, but they are worn where they rattled around in the wooden case over the years. And he said that his uncle often kept these things in the back seat of his Cadillac, guns and, and whatever he collected because he became, I believe, somewhat of a pack rat as well. But I really appreciate these that Russ gave me. We've got a one, two, three, four, and three of the standards. Again, the box is very beautiful, but it needs some kind of padding. Well, enough on that. I did attempt to research Braille micrometers and could find very, very little about it on the internet. Uh, feel free to do that. Correct me and add in the comments if you will. But one thing that I wanted to say about these that uh, I think is interesting is apparently uh, Brown and Sharp and possibly Shear Tomiko and a few other companies made uh, Braille micrometers. Not totally sure on that but they were also made by Moore and Wright in England. And I'm going to show you some of those, and they're nothing like this. I mean nothing. And those will be just pictures off of the Internet. Also, I would be interested in you telling me if you enjoy the beauty of fine tools, whether it be wrenches or precision tools or what, or am I crazy? But some people collect things like these just for the... Uh, design and, and uh, you know they're just gorgeously executed much like firearms are. Something beautiful to behold. Okay I'm sitting at my computer now and you're looking into the monitor which is not the best but I did a search on braille micrometers and here is the more and right from England and the patent is mentioned someplace here. I tried to look it up and since it's a British patent I couldn't find anything about it. This is not a good looking micrometer but it makes a lot of sense that they have a very very large thimble here that uh, 
would have a better feel to it, I believe, than the Sterrett micrometer. So there's several different views here. Take a look at this. There's the back view and there is the patent number if you are interested. But it looks like they modified one of the regular micrometers and added this huge thimble on there. Maybe I call that a barrel. I mean, this is the thimble. So that's the back view. There's kind of a bottom view. I'm not sure of the purpose of this rod, although I think it stabilizes one other element over here. It does have a ratchet right here. And then another view. And a view from this direction. Possibly this entire assembly here is aluminum to lighten the weight, but I really do not know that for sure. I hope you found this interesting because it's quite a different slant on how to build a micrometer compared to the way Sterrett did it. And here's a picture of a Moore and Wright micrometer in the case along with a little adjustment wrench and possibly some instructions or something up here. I thought you might enjoy this picture too because here it says we have a 1950s Braille micrometer for blind inspectors. Again, it's the Moore and Wright. Here is a small article in the 1947 Popular Mechanics magazine showing that Moore and Wright micrometer as well as a height gauge here made for the blind. Pretty hard to understand what this is all about here. Matter of fact, I don't understand it at all, but interesting to note that they made other instruments besides micrometers for the blind. And here's a Braille micrometer that has a greater range, it looks like from 0 to 5 inches perhaps, with the exchangeable spindles. And I believe it's a more and right, but I'm not positive. Thank you very much Troy and Susan Legner and students out there in South Carolina in the School for the Deaf and Blind. I hope I did justice to these beautiful tools and I will soon return them to South Carolina to the true owners. Stand by for just a little extra credit if you will on how Troy packaged these so that even the United States Post Office couldn't ruin them. I hope some of you find this interesting, but this is how Troy packed these. Now, I believe he bought this expensive box for the express purpose of shipping these to me in Illinois so that I could show them in a video. But this is the box that Sterrett sent the this uh, wooden box in. And this box, in turn, was inside of this Sterrett box. So now we got them triple packed and then this one in turn was packed into this bigger box. So other than the post office just plain losing them as it is their want to do, a small A-bomb probably couldn't damage these. This is my wonderful former student, Troy Legner. This picture was taken a few years ago when he stopped to visit. Thank you, Troy. And uh, he's a tall man. He's about uh, six foot six, I believe. So he dwarfs me. But anyway, there we go. And I hope to see you soon, Troy. Well, apparently Troy doesn't trust the post office either because these were shipped to me by UPS and he gave me a prepaid label so all I have to do is stop a brown truck and hand it to them. But I'm very disappointed with uh, UPS because signature is required. I was home, I heard a truck stop and start again and looked out and I found this package on the front porch even though it says signature required we'll try again on the next delivery day well they didn't do any of that didn't even ring the bell luckily I was home so shame on you UPS well I hope it wasn't too hard on the post office and UPS but I've had some really really bad experiences that cost a lot of money 
and that will be explained in another video where I do a major rant if that would be acceptable. Put it in the comments if you can't stand to hear me rant about incompetent people. Maybe I'll try to cut it out, but it's hard for me. Anyway, I hope you very much enjoyed seeing these beautiful micrometers made for the blind. I wish the best for people that are handicapped with their vision or their hearing. I have bad hearing myself. So these will get packed back up in those three or four boxes and sent out here very soon. Again, a big thanks to Troy and Susan Legner out there in South Carolina. Hello to you and so long to everybody else. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.